Warning, the following podcast contains violent scenes that may be unsettling to some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. The post-Civil War landscape of the American West offers escape and opportunities to many new immigrants who come to the country's shore. A few of them brave the journey to the camp town of Missouri Crossing, each looking for a new lease on life in the Dakota Territories. Join the settlers of Missouri Crossing, including Gregory Smith, played by Joaquin, Sister Margaret Miller, played by Monica, Bjorn Hagman, played by Chris, and Craig as the keeper of arcane lore, as we explore the horrors that await us on Down Darker Trails. Over the course of the next few hours, a head count is kind of taken in the camp as the Conquering Heroes return with uh, Mary Smith, who is seemingly fine and no worse for wear. Uh, the dog, which she dubbed Ezekiel, kind of limps behind the three of you as you get back into camp. Johan has set up coffee for the morning and is trying to scrounge together some eggs. Sam Baker kind of got the fire down to a cookable level and had returned with some pans and starts to cook up some steak. There's no real talk about where the steak came from and why it's now so plentiful. And everyone is kind of figuring out what they're what you want to do on going forward. There's a few drovers that are missing. There's another couple that were found dead. Another notable death was Brother Thomas, who Father Noss had discovered with his face missing. There was a long look for Brother Michael, who no one could find for a while, but then she was found no worse for wear, snuggled up behind the bell in the wagon and appears to have slept through the whole thing. Uh, Samantha Smith is incredibly happy to have her family whole, and most people are counting themselves lucky to survive. There's now talk to the plan that was proposed last night about trying to get uh, moving as quick as possible, but then there's the added complication of now having so many of the party dead that Father Noss insists that Christian burials are provided. All right, as you sit, uh, drink coffee, and enjoy st- uh, breakfast of steak, eggs, and beans, scenes on you. Listen, I, uh, I'm not saying we shouldn't respect the dead, but we don't. We don't really have time to waste. Agreed. To give every, to everything one a good proper Christian burial. We, we we have to move on, or else there'll be more burials tomorrow. Agreed. We need to move. I don't care. I look at Sister Miller. That now is not the time for religious formalities. Listen, I, I, I saw it happen a few times. You know, why don't we just put, put the bodies together and we we light a fire for them? We 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 uh put we put the bodies in the fire. We it, it's we can you know we can you know consecrate you know make sure to have the uh make sure to honor the site with a marker, make sure the the ashes are properly buried and stuff. But but we we just cannot we we should not linger too long. How about this, Ms. Sister Miller? You go talk to Father Tom. I'll go talk to Mr. Freeman. See if we can get them to change their mind. This isn't safe, especially with the cattle. I mean, the, the, with the, most of the cattle being butchered, there's no point in us sitting out here being at risk even more. Margaret, do you even share the, these same views of Bjorn and Gregory, or are you on the side of Father Noss for this one? She's definitely on the side of Father Nas for this one, especially because she feels this is all somehow her fault. And while she understands that if they stay another night, something else could happen, she's trying to ignore that and think, well, what are the odds that it would happen twice? You know, and if you don't give these souls, a pro- these bodies of proper Christian burials, their souls won't get to heaven. And then that's another thing that is going to be her fault. But she doesn't tell Mr. Hagman this or Mr. Smith. She just nods. But when she eventually does talk to Father Nas, which she has been avoiding him like the plague, when eventually she does go to speak to him, she's going to take his side. So Bjorn and Gregory kind of asked you to talk to him. Would you want to just have that conversation now? Sure. Do you find him like kind of by the missionary wagon? He's feeding some steak to Sister Michael, who is now 
doing quite a bit better now that she's had a couple regular meals in her and she's actually sitting up in the wagon at this point. Ah, Sister Margaret, um, so good to see you. Come here, my child. Margaret walks up to him, but the second that his voice is directed at her, she begins to kind of very mildly just crump up her uh, her skirt with her hands out of nervousness. She's been avoiding him because she knows she has to confess and she has to receive penance, but she just doesn't know how to tell this man who's been so kind to her that, you know, she's brought this evil here. So she walks up to him, you know, her eyes are on the floor. She's been kind of fasting this morning. She's being extra, extra Catholic reading and holding her rosary around her neck. So she walks up and says, uh, good morning, father. I'm here on the behest of Mr. Smith and Mr. Hogman. They've asked me to speak to you about the fallen. Um, they believe that if we stay here another night to give these bodies the proper burial that they deserve, then we're putting the rest of the camp at risk of um, whatever it was that struck that strange animal. So they are of the mindset that perhaps it would be in our best interest to just make a, a mass grave of sorts and uh, set the remains on fire and bless them. And that would be a way for us to at least move forward while still giving them a, a proper burial, at least in their mind. Uh, they they just wanted me to come here and let you know. Um, they're speaking to Mr. Friedman. And um, well, well that's, that's all. That, that's all. That's the only reason I'm here. I see. And what are your thoughts on the matter? She crumples her skirts a little more and she, she nods very feebly. Well, obviously I would want to do the right thing. I, I do feel that these, these people deserve a proper Christian burial it is, of course, as the Lord wills it, we would want them to have their best chance at getting into heaven. And it would be quite remiss of us to not do right by the good book. I, I do feel we should do the right thing. If we all pitched in, I don't see why we couldn't get it all done before before dusk. He nods and sets the, the pewter tin that he was feeding Sister Michael off of down on the floor of the wagon and kind of like sits up and gets off the wagon and it's interesting because like you, you've you kind of seen him as like a more feeble old man, but every once in a while he does these like surprisingly like bursts of youthful strength that like makes you like wonder like how much of a robust young man he might have been at one point. And you kind of forget the age difference between you. And he's like striding um over uh, towards you now and says, I do believe you're right though sister uh there if we all pitch in it couldn't take that much longer and besides with the the bodies of all these mutilated cattle along it's bound to draw something even worse which i I confess is a argument for leaving but if we don't take care of the bodies and get them released further down then i i am of the firm belief that their immortal souls will be on in peril where come time of the resurrection they will not have bodies to ascend to heaven with i agree father i i just know that it would be remiss of us to keep moving but at the same time we have to really move swiftly otherwise we're putting everyone else in danger including the children i agree come let's see if we can uh, come to some reasonable conclusion um about this yes father as you say and bjorn and gregory um you kind of brought this up to Russ, who is of the mind that it's probably safer to get out of here. However, he goes back and forth about being distanced about his like financial ruin and kind of like has the desire um, he expresses to not just cut his losses, but see if he can like um, at least recover some of the meat that was spent, if it's any good. So Russ Freeman seems to be in favor of staying at least a little bit to, you know, butcher some cattle and get it salted. I can see that one to make Jorn happy because I feel like this is the second time that Russ Freeman has shown people's safety second to his meat profit. So when he says that to Jorn, I look at, I take it Greg and I are standing there with him. 
by the fire. And for a second, I just look at the ground. I clench my jaw and I look back up at him and I say, there's got to be a moment, Mr. Freeman, where I would think that the human lives here are more important than your meat. This is the second time that you show me that's not the case. He kind of looks at you very angrily and says, Hagman, I brought you on to work for me. And this is the second time that you're showing insubordination to me. Are we in the military now? And I gently put my hand on the pistol for a second. And as you see, seeing this commotion, Gregory will uh, put a hand on Bjorn's shoulder, just sort of like trying to calm him down. Listen, Mr. Freeman, I am not in any conscript military of yours. You pay me to watch cattle. You don't pay me to risk people's lives. When does it? When does your conscience start playing a part in all this? When are you going to start thinking, what if this happens again? What if his daughter can't be found again this time? Will you be able to live with that? He He looks incredibly angry now at this point and he says look here i was the first one to go out with him to find his daughter don't tell me who i do and do not care about i was the first one who saw what happened here it almost took my life so uh, at that point gregor will just start like trying to like you know push bjorn away just trying to like just get him to walk away from freeman For- yeah uh gregor you, you kind of feel like you're getting into the middle of like like two men who are kind of doing like the like the puppy chess thing yes, and trying exactly. to like establish dominance. But he's bigger than both of us combined, yeah. probably. <laughs> well, not combined, yeah, but yeah, uh, he's yeah. you're definitely bigger than both of you. Yeah. So yeah, he's he's definitely you know, break. He I feel like he breaks it up somewhat. Would you like to make a roll to see how well you do so? And okay, maybe, sure, yes. I want to do, do like that. intimidation, or do you want to do some sort of uh, fast talk? Would be another one. Um, it would have to be intimidation just because that's the best one I have. Yeah, and you're kind of like using your physical mass to get between the two and establish that you're the dominant person here. Yeah, please work. Nope, 86 out of 15. So Gregory tries to intervene between the two of you, which only fires up um, Russ even more and words are exchanged and before you know it, Bjorn, you're kind of like in a three-way shouting match at this point. Yeah, I realized at this second that, like, I'm not going to change this man's mind. So I look at him for a second. I stop him, like, if you want to put people's lives at risk, then go on ahead. I'm going to take who wants to leave, and we're going to go. And if I get there to that town before you, you're goddamn well straight. I'm going to tell people about this shit that you pulled and that you these people's lives were not more important than the goddamn meat that's on the ground there. I like turn around. I st- try to scream for my son. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yawn! I'm like screaming as I, as I'm storming off towards my gear. So yeah, Gregory, you'll like turn to Freeman. Is I'll, I'll talk to him. God damn it! We cannot. If you're talking to him, tell him that his services are no longer needed, and he should return his that horse to me at once. Uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. I, I, I'll go talk to God. Damn it. At which point, Sister Miller and Father Noss show up. And they immediately are just like, for me, Father. And they're, they're like, trying to like, you know, try to take back his cursing and then bow and go after Gregory. I mean, Bjorn. What's going on here? She asks as she kind of approaches with Father Noss. Mr. Hagman, is everything okay? I'm just like storming off. You probably don't, probably don't even hear you. I'm all like, I look at her for a second and I stop, actually. And I'm like, he thinks that your life is not as important as the meat that's on the ground there. I'm getting my son and I'm going. I'm getting out of here. You can come with me if you want. I'm going to go to that town. And when I get to that town first, I'm going to tell every single person there about this son of a bitch and what he does and how he thinks this is the second time that there's meat more important than you, me, or anyone else here. And as for Gregory, he'll, he'll, he'll like, you know, look after and says, oh, he's riled up. I'll try to... I'll try to talk him down, and he, he he's trying to leave. We, we, we can't we cannot split up at this point. We need safety in numbers. So, uh, look, so you talk to Father. Just try to talk to Freeman. We see if you can talk him out of because we, we need to leave as soon as possible. I'll try okay. to calm down so he doesn't try to just storm off. But yes, just just talk to them, please. Let we have to. We cannot stay. It's not safe there are things watching us and then he'll then he'll go after bjorn margaret you're left um standing there as 
Russ Freeman is just kind of watching uh, his possibly former employee and Gregory just kind of store off to have a conversation and the the big dark skinned um, cowpoke um, kind of crosses his arms and then realizes that he's now facing two people of the cloth and uncrosses them real quick and then crosses himself with the sign of the cross and says oh, excuse me sister uh, father what what can I help you with Margaret is going to look at him and she's trying really hard to not be angry but she already has a low opinion of him since you know she let them starve and you know Mr. Hagman was upset once he's upset again and she sees him as kind of a virtuous man so she looks at Mr. Friedman and says you know well, I do agree that something terrible has happened here and, and we do need to move on. These bodies deserve a proper Christian burial. But aside from that, perhaps when was the last time you read the Bible? For the Lord says, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Because God has said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. For whomever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. This too is meaningless in the kingdom of heaven. Well, sister, I may not have your fancy book learning, but I do know money and it'd be great if I could just forget all about that, but it seems your people won't let me. Let me tell you what it costs for my freedom and for the freedom of all those people that uh, the country still does not trust unless they can provide some sort of like menial service i spent a couple hundred dollars in provisions for this alone several horses a hundred dollars a piece i i'm waving my fee as tra- and acting as my own trail boss and baker over there can't cook for shit so i mean i'm saving money there 90 dollars a piece for each of my cow hands Ho- who knows how many are still alive after all this Eight dollars a piece for each of those cows, and he's indicating um, the the fields in the distance. I'm already ruined. Why are why is everyone so quick to blame me when I just trying to eke out whatever living I can when I have to uproot my entire life out of Texas and travel half the continent away in order to be left alone and live in peace, be my own man? You speak like it's so easy to just. <sighs> to just forgive money and act so virtuous. And it's coming from people who have never went hungry a day, never been whipped to the bone. I ask you, sister, just look inside yourself. Look inside the hearts of all you white folk over there who I brought with me on this and tell me who's thinking of whom here. I understand that you need to make a living. We all need to eat. We all need to sleep and we all need to have a place where we can rest our head at night. But I beseech you to look around. There are children here. Children, for goodness sakes. They are suffering as much as we are. And while you cry about your cattle, Mr. Hagman's been attacked. Mr. Gregory Smith has been attacked. We don't know what's out there. And the longer we linger for money, for cattle, for meat, it could be you. It could be you in that field tonight. It could be any of us. Does that not matter to you? Do you think your money's going to save you then when this beast attacks again? When Mr. Hagman's not around? When we don't have enough ammunition? When no one is here to save you? Will your precious coin save you from this murderous animal? That sounds like either a persuade or fast talk roll. No, I got a 90 out of 30. I did not. I did not persuade anyone. Record scratch. (laughs) Would you like to push the roll or... Are you fine just failing it? I can't do push it. it. It's do like it. it's do like it. 60. No, there's no way I can push that. I think I'm okay with just failing it. I am, after all, a woman in the 1700s. Oh, ouch. Yeah, that is a good point. You notice that um, Russ just doesn't have it in him to continue this conversation. So he kind of turns to Father Noss and says, Father, I'm going to take the time I need to recover as much as I can. I sincerely hope that you and the rest decide to stay and help for things would be much um, faster if you do. And believe me when I say that it is my intention to see a good Christian burial for each of my fellow drovers. 
I'm going to take the time it needs to do that and assume the risk myself. I would be happy for any assistance, but for those who do not see the point in staying with this wagon train any longer, they are free men and can do as they will. And the father kind of nods at that, and the scene kind of like dissolves as Gregory and Bjorn are having a conversation a little further away. Bjorn, I get I get it. We, I know we can't stay, but going off on your own is not the solution. What what are the other options? What to sit here as the man he he scrape he scrapes the meat off the ground. <sighs> Just your children and my children. I know, I know, but we. The th- here's the thing: the more people there are, the more the safer everyone else will be. That's their safety and numbers. That's why you don't just see animals, you know, running around in the cities. They 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 run from men. If we all if we just go off by ourselves, they'll, they'll be it'll be so much easier for those things. If there's more of those things to pick us off, then we need to. If I stay, then we need to do. We need to be guards tonight. Yes, yes, that, that's very simple. But yes. I have no job now. I lost my job. Look, I, I'll after after this is a week. I'll try to talk to Mr. Freeman's. If I can talk to him, you come with no, me. No, 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 no. You, you've done enough talking, okay? <laughs> I'll just sit back. I've defended the people. I rode to the Twin Cities and got food and brought it back here because that man would not share his meat with you all. But we have to live with him for two days. Longer than that, he's going. We're going to, to. But we don't have to rely on him in Bismarck. But we will have to deal with him. We we do you want to just do you want to just spend there like twenty years from now, stewing and hate till at one point he gets drunk and shoots you and you sleep? Just we don't need to make more enemies than we already have. You're correct, Gregory. You're correct. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I see. I'm sorry. I was scared just like you when your daughter was missing. I'm scared for my son. I'm scared for Sister Miller and Father Tom. I'm scared for the whole camp. I'm scared for Freeman, for Christ's sakes. But he won't okay. listen. But I understand. I'll stay. So, j- just good. Now, if you want, I can be willing to try to make some sort of deal with him to get to your job. If you still want it. If you're willing I to. I need the money. I need the money. Okay, then I will talk to him. Maybe I can, I don't know, promise him free horseshoes and free repairs for a few years. Oh, uh, Gregory, you don't got to do that. It's whatever I need to do. It's. I put my hand on his we, shoulder. Thank you. We will need to rely on each other. Just because we finally make it to the crossing does not mean we necessarily be safe. We need to make sure that nothing can threaten us. Not from outside and not from inside our walls. I nod to him. Are you okay? I haven't slept since I don't know when. After you talk to Freeman, go sleep. I'll check on your wife and your children. I I can't. I I... Talk to Sister Miller. She has a good ear. She's listening to me while I talk. Talk to her. Sister Miller, the first Missouri Crossing therapist. (laughs) You (laughs) know? You see, Gregory, he, he like you see his, like his crosses his arms and like you see his shoulders pinch at high. Just rise talk up. to her, talk to her, Greg. Go talk to Freeman and talk to her. It yeah. helps. Trust me, it helped right, me. I'll try some of this conf- um, confession. It's not me. even confession. She just talks to you and listens, and she's a good listener. Okay, fine. I'll I'll, I'll talk to the lady preacher or whatever she is. I don't, I don't I even st- know anymore. I stick out my hand to him. I shake it. Hey, good job with that Norwegian trail sniffer, huh? I told you they're a good breed. You were right. Give that one some extra scraps tonight. And I smile as I walk off towards my where I stay at. Oh, God, I'm wondering if all the cow folk are going to be looking at me like I'm pariah now. <laughs> so, Gregory, when you get back, the first individual that you encounter is Father Nas, who has taken up um, a spade and says to you, I hope you don't mind, Mr. Smith, but I got to borrow this. It's fine. It's fine. I would be very grateful for your help, as I'm sure with the souls of those we lost. You see Gregory sort of like, she'll bite at his lip for a second, then his 
Fine. Good, good. Just, 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 uh. Then he'll, he'll like you know, look for like a spade of his own, just sort of start digging. Just, just get, just get. The... No offense to the dead. It's just I don't want to have to bury anyone else tomorrow night. I understand. And the faster we do this, the faster we can get moving. I know emotions have gone high, but I I pray that our journey is nearing its end. Yes. It, it better it, God willing it So um the two of you are I mean you're of different ages, but at one point you're both pretty strapping uh, men. Would you like to make me a strength roll to see what your progress is? Sure. If if you want to indeed help him and yeah, dig some graves. Yeah. Just, 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 it's just the straight, straight strength roll? Yes, give me a straight strength roll, unless you have something involved with excavating. No, I don't think I got 55 out of 65. All right, you are making pretty good time between you and the priest. All right, Margaret, what are you getting up to? Obviously, the caravan hasn't left yet, but there's there's lots of talk of people wanting to leave. There's, you see, Gregory and Father Nos are pitching in to dig some graves. Is there anything you would like to do? She would like to probably have a talk with uh, Sister Michael. She feels she has to get something off her chest, but she's not very comfortable doing it with Father Nas at the moment. Right. She's, as far as you know, still in the wagon. Sister Miller is going to approach and uh, get in the wagon, kind of close the curtain, the entry of it, just to make sure they have privacy and say, how are you feeling? Uh, You look much better. Oh, I, I, I am, uh, Sister Margaret. I mean, just I, I, I acknowledge my own weakness, but I, I, I feel like, thank God, I am doing much better now. It's amazing what a uh, few provisions and prayer can do for the body. Yes, I've been, I've been praying for you every morning and every night, and I know that Father Nas has been here taking care of you. Uh, she kind of starts looking a little antsy and uh, looking around to make sure that, you know, they have complete privacy. Uh, would it be okay if I spoke with you for a few minutes? I, I feel I have to confess. Uh, of course, but um, I could offer whatever guidance uh, I might be able to, but y- you know only a priest can absolve you from your sins. I know, I know. I'm just, I'm not quite ready to talk to him yet. Oh, hon, There's... it's okay. She starts kind of shaking a little bit. And um, she says, you know, the the things that have happened in the camp, you know, the attacks, that animal, the, the cattle, the, the, the people, you, how, how much have you been told? Um, I was told that uh, maybe some, it might have been wolves or coyotes had did quite a bit of damage to the camp. But uh, I, I, I hear that... Um, Mr. Smith and Mr. Hagman were able to drive them off, and um, they were able to find uh, little Mary and her dog. And I mean, I haven't seen Thomas for a while, but I'm sure he'll be along to fill me in on the rest of the details. I'm, I know he's been just working ever so hard to keep me uh, provisioned here. It wasn't wolves. It, it wasn't any of that. And she starts shaking a little more now to the point where her teeth are chattering a little bit. I, my confession is I, I, I think that there's, there's a great evil that has befallen us. And unfortunately, I, I think I'm the one that brought it here. Oh, oh, Margaret, that, that can't be so. There's, there's nothing you could have done to bring evil here. It was, it was no, just like. No, no, I have, little... I have. Oh. oh, Mother Superior was right. I, I, I have lied, and and I am filled with sloth, and and I have looked at a man through the eyes of a woman, not through the eyes of a woman of faith, and and I just I I yelled at Mister Friedman about his greed. I I'm filled with with wrath and and lust and sloth, and I am just. I am the epitome of walking sin, and I am a plague upon this camp. She grabs your hand as your, like, tears continue and kind of looks up and meets your now watery eyes and says, My dear Margaret, 
that that just means you're human it's not just being human i'm not i'm supposed to be i'm supposed to be an example for others and i can't i can't i can't even look at mr hagman and and not have these thoughts and 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 those cows i saw them i saw them sister michael that they were not killed by wolves they were they were murdered but not eaten and 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 i've i've heard the men speak that their bodies without faces without limbs i this is not something that would have happened naturally this is just this is sin this is satan the great deceiver the prince of lies is amongst us like a blanket strangling us all and if we stay here another moment we'll be next i i don't know what to say there um uh and she crosses herself at this point um perhaps uh perhaps if we pray together yes that would that would surely uh get he back satan (laughs) and like you notice like she's kind of turned a bit red and like it's feeling a lot more stuffy um in the back of the wagon and the sun started beating down and you kind of realize now that you're actually sweating quite profusely from your um emotional uh deluge that um you sprouted she's gonna bring out her rosary with her shaking hands just take it right off her neck and hold on to sister michael's hands and just start praying and and praying and sobbing as she prays feeling like it's some sort of cathartic release like as she you know prays and she sobs and maybe through her tears the sin will just leave her body and the camera kind of pans out um from the two of you and exits the wagon and zooms out and you see gregory and father nos digging in the foreground you see bjorn kind of just pacing in the background and just the camera settles on a figure just sitting on it looks to be like a barrel just spinning and spinning the cylinder on his revolver bjorn what are you doing is what is johan doing right now uh johan is out with sam baker he had recently emptied a barrel of salt pork and basically he's taking the barrel and a sharp knife and going around with Sam trying to cut up some cows that have been left out and before they start to rot, seeing as though he, he's assuming he's still employed, so he's going about his duties. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like looking at Gregory digging, and I'm like, well, since I'm fucking here, you know, and I just kind of like head over there feeling bad that, you know, this is going on. And I walk up to the two and I'm like, you got another shovel there, friend. I'm pretty sure there's one around somewhere. I believe I saw a pickaxe uh, near the wagon. All right. So I'd go take off my shirt and I'd get the pickaxe and I'd just start chipping away at the ground, adding to the labor. And I, as I like in one mid swing while Gregory's like digging, I'm like, so how did that talk go? And I just kind of look at him. I, I we're doing this first. It's just it's it's just it's it's work to keep the mind occupied you know yeah i'm not gonna have work to keep my wallet occupied if the talk doesn't happen gregory all right then he'll he'll, he'll, like toss his spade towards uh bjorn i'll go talk to him then i'll catch it thank you friend and as i like i put it in the dirt you know and start like digging in the manual labor feeling kind of bad but knowing that like because i'm like jordan's like well you can talk to him or i'm gonna talk to him and you don't want me to talk to him you know what i mean so it's mm. like so yeah <laughs> gregory will seek out mr freeman you, you saw the direction that um he headed out and you're kind of headed out and you see the figure just kind of sitting down his back towards you what and you're approaching him from behind what what are your thoughts right now okay so he definitely see like you know during the whole argument with uh you know between Bjorn and Freeman like Gregory he kind of gets where Freeman's coming from like you know, if some if you know if you know somebody had like you know just taken all of his you know blacksmithing tools and just like tossed them out and buried them all across the you know, like the plains he'd be he'd be you know concerned and you know he want to you know dig them up because you know that if he can't can't have his you know stuff to you know fund his business then he can't feed his family and all that stuff so he, he gets the need for you know making sure that you have something you know, money to you know do stuff to make a living with but at the same time he's terrified of what happened last night so he's he 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 sympathizes with him somewhat but he's he is 
mostly trying to, okay, so just make sure that we don't end up killing each other before we even get there or after we get to the, the crossing. Yeah, and as you're thinking this, you're kind of coming up on Russ. He's sitting on, looks to be like a log or a barrel or something, and you're hearing some sort of metallic clicking going on. Look, Freeman, okay, so I'm here to politely discuss you not firing Bjorn. He hasn't said anything yet. His back is still towards you, but the clicking kind of slows so, you look. I get that you want to have a have something to sustain yourself and your workers when we finally get to our destination. I get it, Bjorn. He's uh, he, he he doesn't he he left his home in Europe to come here. He, I, I guess for him it's it's easier just to drop everything and just head out into the to the. Just, with, just leave with nothing, but we can't. We can't afford to be fighting amongst ourselves like this. Not when there's things out there that will kill us. We look. Huh? So, if it wouldn't be, he, if it just look, I, I when we get there and I get my forge set up and running again, I'll, I'll give you. You know, a free you know, free repairs on any horseshoes, any you know, any bits of t- you know, harnesses. I, I'll I, I'll do it. They give you a, a disc, a, a free free give them free for a, like a, a year. There's a big sigh coming from Russ, and he kind of turns around and pivots, and you see that he's been playing with a cylinder on his revolver, and says, "Mr. Smith, I don't need your charity." I'm not trying to be to give you charity. I'm trying to bargain for my friend's employment. And in bargaining, you give something to get something. So if you don't want, what then what would you want then in, in exchange? I'm not going to throw Bjorn Hagman and his son out. I, I'm not going to do that. I'm, I like to think I'm a good person and I'm trying my best to look out for the members of this train, however small it may be now. But... Damn, it's real hard. It's real hard. And I mean, you, him, the missionaries, you're welcome to stay, obviously, but... We were going to stay. Of course, we're going to stay. I'm, I'm grateful for that. I mean, you boys, you, you got grit. Uh, I could say that. I mean, you did face down what was out there and you came out alive, which is more than I could say for myself or some of my men. But I mean... Even if, even if we do make this out, I, even if I do keep Hagman on and his son, I, I can't afford to pay him now. Look, and you look out across the fields and see just like the devastation that was wrecked on the herd. There's only like a couple amongst the several hundred bodies that are out there, and it just it's probably dawning on you that like any payment meant for the cowboys was probably going to be after sale of their livestock and and i will say after you're just really just seeing just how much of the herd was lost even greg just going jesus christ almighty i mean i'd be surprised if there was a hundred of them left they're all scattered into the four winds by now well I'm tr- I'm tr- I'm searching for something to say that won't just tear you down even more. But if I'm being honest with you, that's hard. You you have lost a lot, my friend. Yes, there's a lot of senseless waste and just wanton destruction. And what I wouldn't give to just take a few cows from here and bring them back with some machine or something out of one of those novels and just kill them a few days earlier. Do you know what I mean? I think I see. Just all this waste, all this torment that we've been put through. Is this how it's supposed to be? I thought West was the land of opportunity. Well, opportunity certainly hit us. Just wasn't a good opportunity. Hmm. If I'm being honest with you, I'm... uh, I'm, I'm worried too that even if we do make it that 
whatever devastated the herd here will follow us to the crossing. We, I, I don't know how to describe the thing I saw. It, I've never seen any animal like it before. It, 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 it was too dark to really see it. And I brought my family out here. And now I'm, 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 I, I got so, I was so worried about Mary last night. And now it, it, it's, as it, there's, it's because we're still out here. We can't just go back. We're here. We have to stay here if you want to make a living off this. But it's just, we have to do with what we have. It's, we have no other option. It's, Either work is either just pick up whatever we have left or just stop. You're right. We have to pick up. We have to keep moving. All right. Why don't you go tell Hagman that take the night to corral whatever other herd that we can and leave at first thing. That will give that priest time to bury the folk and hopefully we can stand guard tonight against whatever might come about. Maybe you'll make up your money in, in wolf skins or something. I don't know. When they Tr- come... Trust me, they don't sell that much. Pity. Goodbye. And as you walk away, you see him like turn the cylinder of his revolver a few times, consider it, and then put it back into its holster. If you like the style and feel of Missouri Crossing, then you'll like Diluted. Set in 1848, Deluded follows a coterie who have set themselves to find out who is behind a mysterious tonic that plagues the kindred society of Victorian England. 